use this moment uh, to uh, welcome those who watch us on our video program, Jeevan Jyoti. We've been watched in 176 nations of the world. Today we are going to read from, study from the book of Churches. Pastor had did the part one teaching last week, but we will continue with that. We will look into Churches chapter 6, and uh, we'll read from verse 11 onwards, and I'll read that in the New International Version. And the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizarite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a winepress to keep it from Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in strength. You have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I am, am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, replied Gideon. But how can I save, my, uh, save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I'll be with you. You will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Holy God, bless the hearing and the reading of your word. Minister to us in your precious name. Amen. Amen. The book of Judges is also called the book of cycles. The key words in the book of Judges is in the last uh, uh, chapter where it said, everyone did whatever was pleasing to them. Whatever was uh, Whatever they desired in their heart, they did. And it's a great danger. I want to tell you that in this night time, that uh, when we do things according to our desire, it is ending into a big uh, uh, destruction. It's a also, we see a cycle or a pattern that is repeated uh, over here. And we, uh, we can see over there from the last week's teaching, you know, we can see it's a cycle. First, there is sin, you know, people indulge in sin, and then the enemy in invades and then oppression and then people cry unto the Lord and Lord brings deliverance and there is peace and again when there is peace again that's see by the way we need to know one thing when there is peace that's a sign of danger it's a sign of danger because uh, don't uh, uh, that's the that's the time that we need uh, I, I think there is some kind of echo coming if, if we can help with um, so there is a there is a sign of danger when there is um, peace because when there is peace people don't want to pray and that's the time we need to pray more when everything looks great that's the time we need to pray more so watch out for those cues in our life today what we are going to talk is about the second part of that encounter i'm believing that each one of us will have encounters in our life here we see something first thing we see over here is god met gideon in the wine press he will meet you in those lonely moments never discount those lonely moments uh, unimportant in your life those private moments when you are by yourself God will meet you in those private moments when he was at the at the wine press and doing his business and I believe that those are the most powerful moments in our Christian walk and here we see that uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said Lord is with with you mighty man of warrior see the thing is we need to understand that God's call upon our lives will turn around our life for good you know his call has everything that we need to become effective in this life when Peter writes he says according to the promise that he has given we he has given everything for the life and godliness that uh, and the great precious promises uh, for us to be effective uh, in what God has called he qualifies the call tonight I want to tell you that God is looking for people who are available it is not about what kind of skill you have it is about are you willing to stand for the Lord God is going to put the talents you know one of the things what we have to realize is great is the talent but if the attitude is not right God does not need that person 
He needs a person who is willing to be a servant in the kingdom. One who wants to be the leader needs to be the servant. And that is the attitude of a leader, a call when God gives. And I want to tell you another thing is, if you think yourself is no, you're nobody, that's the right spot to begin. Because God wants to use those people. He wants to make the world see that what I'm going to use, do with the ordinary people. He wants to make the wise people of this world abased by using weaker vessels. By using people who don't have wisdom like they have. And to make a mockery of the world system and the satanic forces. What God can do through an ordinary person you and God are a great army uh, the, the late ma great man of God Dr. Billy Graham said when a man or a woman gets on their knees and gets into a business with God that's an army that's all you need you don't need anybody else you need God that's it when the Lord is with you when we talk about call, you know, I just think about the time God called me into ministry. I think I have shared with some of you, but I feel like for the, those who have not heard, heard I didn't need you to tell you that when, how God called me into ministry. Honestly speaking, I did not want to go into ministry. I had nothing to do with ministry. Ministry was my last thing. I, want to go, I wanted to go up the corporate ladder and be successful in what I was doing. I took a lot of pride in being a, doing what I was doing. I wanted to be good in my business and accounting and to be a smart person in the financial field but Lord had some other plans today I have to tell you that he has really taken away all those desires from me you know that was like my that was like it was like like a second nature it was like in my blood you know you could call me in the middle of the night and ask me about balance sheets and about budgets and things I could tell you from the back of I was so good at it but the Lord took that desire away because he had some other plans in my life and I did not want to do ministry because I came from a house where we, where we, we saw ministry we saw the trials and the challenges of ministry and for me ministry was the last thing but when you say no, you know God is going to get hold of you. You know, in the back of my mind, I always knew that someday God is going to get hold of me. You know, I did ministry in the sense like I used to help in the ministry, but I did not want to go into full-time ministry. One day I was coming back from work and uh, Holy Spirit started speaking to me and said, Son, I have called you to my ministry. It is almost, uh, I would say, 17 years back. And I said, no, we, there was a big park and I had to cross through that park to get to my house. We, we, our home was like an apartment like you have apartments. We owned an apartment house. And um, as I was walking down, um, again, the Holy Spirit spoke the second time. The first time again said, son, I want you to be in my service. I said, no. Second time again, I said, no. Third time, the Holy Spirit said, son, I want you to be in my service. And this time... I got into a business. I said, okay, I am going to preach Jesus saves and Jesus heals. And by the way, when I'm saying this, I meant every word I said. I said to the Holy Spirit, me and Holy Spirit were having a conversation. I said, I'm going to preach Jesus heals and here's my mother suffering with chronic schizophrenia. And the people will say, physician, heal thyself. You speak about healing. There is healing in your house. And the world is pointing, will point fingers at me. And that's the time again the Holy Spirit said, I will fight this battle against Satan with Jesus. And told me to repeat this three times. I went home. I got on the piano and I started playing for almost three hours in worship in tears. Fast forward seven years later, I was in Dallas. By the way, God healed my mother in the year 2008. And in that same year, 2008, I don't want to go into that story. That's a longer story. God completely healed. She had a glorious end. She was completely in good state of mind. She was an amazing woman of God. But there was a, a thing that happened in her life that led to that, uh, that situation. But however... God was faithful. God healed her. And again, God get, got back to my, the case in 2008. And I was in Dallas. I was praying for my, son, uh, my father. My father was in his last stage. He, was, he had a kidney, kidney failure. He was in ministry. 
I heard the Lord say, get ready, my son. You are going into ministry in three years. And God spoke to me through his word in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 through 18. There is a verse where it says, then after three years, the Lord told me, underscore that word, my son. I am going to call you in three years. And exactly in three years, in the year 2011, after God called my mother home, God called me into ministry. I was in Dallas by myself, struggling with faith. Trust me, faith, I did not know what was faith. You know, I, I, I could speak faith, but you know, when the rubber has to meet the road, when we go through our own problems, when you face realities of life, that's when our faith is tested. I could speak the faith about my father and mother and all those great men. That doesn't mean anything. When I am, I am facing it, I mean, fear just engulfed me. I mean, you give me all the scriptures of the Bible. For me, it didn't mean anything because I was in such panic. I was like anybody. I was like an ordinary person. God met me at that moment. And God miraculously led me through that journey. Even to, the, to this day, when I look back, it's just amazing. I remember in 2011, I was trying to wiggle my way out to still find my corporate future. And the Lord said, son, don't mess with me. You don't know. I am going to put, throw you like Jonah in the deep sea. If you try to play around with the call I have upon my life. I knew it is better to fall in the hands of God. Friends, when God calls us, it is a special call. He qualifies that call. Not only he qualifies the call, he sees us different than the way others see. God sees us differently in the sermon handout. We can see that. He says, you mighty man of warrior. You know, don't try to label something what somebody has spoken about you. See what God has spoken about you. When they were about to get David anointed, you know, they paraded all his older brothers. And when they came to the, to the last one, God told through Samuel, God sees the heart, not the outward. Man is always looking at the outward, but God is looking at your heart. Oh, where is your heart tonight is the question. It doesn't matter where you are in age, in life. God, it doesn't matter because God called Moses to ministry oh, almost at the age of 80. So don't worry about the age. Don't worry about anything. But when God calls, here am I. He will take care of everything that pertains to your life. Hallelujah. He sees us different. You know, it, he was hiding there. He was hiding there in this place trying that nobody would know him. But God wants you to may be a big display of his trophy of his grace. Look what I'm going to do with Gideon. And look what I'm going to do with everyone in this room. I am believing that you're going to have encounters with God when you get into a business. This is serious. God is going to pour, pour his spirit upon you. When Paul writes to Ephesians, he says, What is the exceeding greatness of his power that is us word, which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised from the dead and he has given it to the church and you you are that church. You and I are the church. When Christ is seated up there in, in, with, with, with the Father, you, are all, you and I are also seated in the Spirit. Absolutely. We need to have a conscious awareness of who we are in Christ. Many in, in, many in the church are walking as if they are nothing. You are the righteousness of God. You are precious and dear unto me, says the Lord. I have engraved your name. See, when God had this called Gideon, the next thing what we see is God wanted to set some things right. You know, we need to understand that the spiritual is very important before it takes care of the things in the natural. You know, we are always worrying about when the next paycheck will come and how the, we will pay the mortgages and uh, the job and all those things. But God, God wants to deal with the heart. 
That's why many times we, we miss it. Because enemy is a deceiver. He only shows you the outside. God is looking for the inside. Because he says, if I can take care of their hearts first, then that's not a problem. He had to take care of Abraham's heart as the sacrifice was being made. He wanted to make sure with Abraham this deal. Abraham, your love is not for Isaac, but for me. If it is me to the point where you have to sacrifice your son, you will do it. That is the Christian attitude. Lord, I do not serve you for these trinkets. I serve you for who you are. You know, all these blessings are like trinkets. I'm trust me, I tell you, because these are all going to pass away. The greatest blessing that he has saved us and we shall be with him forever. Those are like bonuses. Don't, uh, don't fixate your eyes on that. Amen to it. He will take care of every little detail, everything that pertains to you. But the thing is, our eyes should be on the Lord. Oh, little children, do not have idols in your heart. What it means by the word idol is that which takes the place of God in your life. That means don't keep anything dearer in your heart than God. He is the number one. He is the number one. I love you, Lord, with all my heart and strength. You matter the most. Hallelujah. There will be moments when our love will be tested. Our allegiance and devotion. He made an altar. And he built a communion with the Lord. He made an altar where he... Where, where we can see that he, uh, uh, where he built this altar. He got this, uh, made these sacrifices. A picture that, Lord, I, I bring myself as a living sacrifice and at the same time he destroyed the altars of Baal and Asherah pole we can see over there today the question is what kind of altars are erected do we have a family altar do we have prayer in our house a family that prays will stay together Prayer is so important. I have to tell you something that I've seen in, in my family as my father. He made it a point that son, to, to all three of us, my, bro, my, my two brothers and us and our family, that prayer was the most important thing. Family prayer was very important in our, in our daily life. He made it a point that we always had family prayer in the evening. That's so important. That is where we are burning Oh, that altar before the Lord. Thank you for everything. You are our all in all. We went through so many challenges and struggles in, in, in our life. We saw, we, we thought that this will never end. But God was telling, I am coming. I am coming. My answer is on the way. But when we read in Jeremiah 2.13, it says, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken the spring of living water. They have built their own cisterns. Or they, that cannot hold the water. We are trying to do things by our own strength. But here is God's Spirit wants to do greater things through our lives. They, they, looked, they, they, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. We, we read about uh, what Jeremiah says about in, during the times of kings, how they did evil in the sight of the Lord. God requires obedience. You know, God gave some instructions to Gideon. And uh, he followed those instructions. He told them to gather the people for this battle. Hallelujah. You know, God is not going to move. Until and unless we, we, we also move from our seats. There is obedience. There is, obedience is so important. I'm thinking about the times the Lord has asked me to step out in faith and believe and pray for various situations in life. Very recently, I met this nurse and she was helping with us. And um, uh, she needed prayer about a certain situation. Her son uh, is a drug addict. And uh, God told me to pray for her. And she kind of uh, shared, it was like an impossible situation in her, in her life. And um, I prayed by faith, believing. God told me to pray and I'm going to do the work. You open your mouth. You do the possible. I'm going to do the impossible. I met her after almost nine months. And um, 
she 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 saw me and she met when she met me she said do you remember me i could not remember because there are so many people i meet and she told me that you prayed for my son and right after you prayed immediately jesus appeared in a vision to my son and jesus told that these drugs are brought by this lucifer immediately he was set free hallelujah god wants to do that through each one of us we are not, neither am i special None of us are special. We are all special in His sight. The thing is, we need to release. That's, I, mean, I realize that on our tongue is somebody's destiny, a nation's destiny, a city's destiny, a family's destiny is on your tongue. When you unlock it, somebody is being set free. Be generous. Be good stewards of what God has given. Not just generosity in the finances, but generosity in speaking blessing over people's life. That is a kind of obedience when you go out there. We got to do that. He was obedient because he was called to deliver these people. God, can, you, God could have used somebody else. God could have used somebody other than Gideon, but God wanted to use him. When that word comes to you, don't, don't pass it on to somebody else. God will confirm his word. You know, when God calls, you know, there is always these doubts. You know, pastor has this fleece over here, you know. You know, when we talk about this Gideon's fleece, I remember my own fleece. Uh, you know, we have all these doubts, you know, oh Lord, uh, how this is going to be. I don't know, are you really with me? And all these questions are there. Are you going to, are you really going to show this? And all these questions are there. And it's natural. You know, God is, you see, by the way, God is not going to, to condemn you or rebuke you for that. I had my share of fleece in the year 2011. You know, when uh, this brother of, uh, brother from this church, he, he tried to reach out to me about this Indian ministry and everything. I, and I was basically running away. He called me at least 15, 20 times and I kept on, you know, not even taking his phone call. And I, every time I had this prayer, you know, this verse, you know, to just defend myself. I said, being confident in this, he who began a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, I am going into the seminary and there's this, this class, this has not finished. So which means, Lord, if I go into ministry now, what you have promised will not finish. So I am... But God had a way to get hold of me. I tried all my excuses. Lord, I mean, I don't know what it is. Will it possible? And all those things. And finally, this, uh, finally, this brother got hold of me and said, you need to come to Pittsburgh. So I said, Lord, I'm going to put three things before you. Like the Gideon's fleece. I said, Lord, I have not driven 600 miles. By the way, you, you, for, for those of you who do not understand, you know, in India, we don't drive 600 miles. We all, we go by train. So 600 miles, if you tell them 600 miles by car, I mean, rarely somebody may do one or two, but normally we tra travel by train. So Lord, I said, Lord, I don't, I cannot drive 600 miles, 10 hours from Chattanooga to Tennessee. I want somebody to sit next to me. God provided that person to sit next to me. Then I said, Lord, my daughter had all these vomitings. We had once gone to Houston, from Dallas to Houston. It's like 200 some miles. She vomited all the ways, both ways. I said, Lord, this is 600 miles, 10 hours. This is going to be horrible. She is going to vomit both ways. That's 1,200 miles, 20 hours. And I just cannot take it. She should not vomit both ways. And the third thing I said was, Lord, and God took care of that one. The third thing I said to the Lord was, when I meet Pastor Lance, Lord, you speak to the pastor and tell, speak through him that he is fine, that I will finish my school and then come back. Lord, fulfill all my fleas. Hallelujah. I knew God was calling me to this city. And I know that that's where I have been called. There have been challenges. There have been moments of trials. But I know I am not leaving this city just like that. Because God has called me here. And God has told me to face it. And where he, provide, where he guides, he will provide. Church, God will confirm the call upon your life. He confirmed with Gideon, you know, the fleece, uh, the, the, the dampness on the fleece. And then he, he ringed it and there was in, enough water in the bowl. And then, then he again, oh, all, the, all, 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 the, all the fleece all around, uh, all around it. Just to prove it, he's with you. The battle is the Lord's. And as we respond, I want the worship team to come forward. You know, we want to spend some time in praying because I want, I see everyone leader in this room. 
You know, that's, that's the thing. Our responses opens do more doors. You know, God, God will speak certain things, then we had to respond. Gideon responded, you know, he called the people and he called these people from all the tribes to fight this battle. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And as you do the job, he will show the things. You got to be moving. Miracle is in the moment. God needs to see our faith. In the book of Mark, it says, I like that phrase. You know, when they lowered down the paralytic, there is a phrase where it says, Jesus saw their faith. Tonight, Jesus wants to see your faith. What is your response? How do you respond to it? By the way, I want to tell you, you know, somebody of, some of you may ask, how can I increase my faith? Very simple. Be faithful. What does it mean by being faithful? When somebody comes to you, or you meet on the way, speak loud. God sees. If you can take care of that one, He will give you more. Why should, you give, why should He give you more when you are not taking care of the one I gave you here? God told me, be a faithful steward of everyone that comes before me. Then I will give you more. He tests each one of us. He, that's what he did with Gideon. Gideon could have short-circuited it. But Gideon realized that the more I am faithful, God is going to make you a star. He used an ordinary farm boy, Dr. Billy Graham. He used a, an ordinary man like D.L. Moody. Was, he was helping at the shoe shop. Or he used a, a, a young man from, from England on a cold wintry night when this lay preacher said, look, and as he was preaching, look unto me, all the ends of the earth and be saved. And this lay preacher said to this young man, you got to be saved. And that was Charles Hayden Spurgeon, the Prince of Preacher. He did not become the Prince of Preacher when he was standing over there the moment he accepted the call. Tonight, I want the church to come forward. I want to pray over you. We want to pray over you because you all are mighty men. God is with you. Go with this might. It's not your strength. Lord, look down on yourself. Look down. Look up to God. Hallelujah. Church, can we all rise up to our feet? I want to personally minister to everyone in this room. Our response matters. your mortal bodies Mary said how this is possible with God all things are possible and in Ecclesiastes 11 5 says the way it grows the womb grows in in the, the, the child grows in the one with the with, with with the child so are the ways of God are you willing to step out in faith? Get out of your comfort zones tonight. Lord, I want to be that witness. Lord, I want to be that mouthpiece. Lord, I want to be that best businessman. Lord, I want to be that great leader in this generation. I don't want to lose this moment to pass by. Lord, here am I. Use me. The kingdom just needs you. He doesn't need anything else. He does not need your money. He does not need your education. All that he needs is a willing heart to serve. Holy God, Lord, as these, each one are coming forward, Lord, minister to them. Holy Spirit, break every shackle of the enemy in Jesus' name. Lord, let the spirit of that leadership arise in this place. Let the anointing arise. Let the giftings inside of them be unearthed in Jesus' name. We give you the praise and the honor. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.